Thank you. Good day, Mr. Attorney General. And this may be the reason that, they, that it's good for you to leave the Chief Justice and that group before each of us speak, because you would have already heard all that. Uh, I want to thank you personally for your office and your engagement on Camp Lejeune uh, and on uh, obviously a vast amount of litigation. Uh, that is one of the many, many jobs that, that falls at your feet. One of the jobs that falls at our feet here is that we, we are watchdogs of the executive branch. You have previously said that you are not Congress's attorney, and you've said you're not the president's attorney. And I'm assuming that you're neither our prosecutor nor our defense attorney, and you are neither the president's prosecutor nor defense attorney. And that's why the, today's investigation really does deal with the fact that if you're not, by definition, the president's prosecutor, but we have an obligation to see whether or not the president or a member of his family or in concert with the president's activities, in fact, need to be overseen, um, admonished, or even prosecuted. And so I, wanna, I have a couple of questions for you, and one of them is that uh, you have not said this very much today, but you often say, I cannot comment on that because it's an ongoing investigation. And when we ask for information, you very commonly say that it is the policy, not the law, but the policy of the Department of Justice not to provide information related to an ongoing investigation. So far, I'm on track. Is that correct? I think, I, I think I've said more than it's just a policy. Um, I think the letters we've sent uh, uh, trace it uh, to the constitutional separation of powers, so, to Rule 6E of the Federal Rules of Criminal Procedure, et cetera. But in general, I'm in accord with what you're saying. So one of the challenges we face is that just a matter of weeks ago, a federal judge found the actions of uh, now special prosecutor, to be so outside what he could ag agree to that he pushed back on a plea settlement and nullified it and sent the U.S. attorney going back. In light of that, don't you think it's appropriate for that portion to be considered a pre ongoing investigation and for Congress to legitimately look at the activities leading up to that failed plea bargain rather than wait until weeks, months, or years from now a case is fully settled? Yeah. So um, if, if, if you'll give me a chance, I, uh, first, I, I don't agree with the uh, characterization of what happened in the plea. Uh, the district judge performed her obligations under Rule 11 uh, to determine whether the parties were in agreement as to what each had agreed to and determined that they were not. The plea fell apart, as you know. Uh, there's been another prosecution, so that leads to the second thing. We are in, uh, Mr. Weiss is in the midst of an ongoing prosecution on the very matter that you're talking about. Okay, but uh, Mr. Attorney General, if we believe, and we do, at least on this side of the dais, that a pattern of behavior is occurring relative to the investigation of Hunter Biden, particularly and in including, well, he lived in the vice president's home, well, he operated commingled uh, with the vice president, and even today as he travels with the president. So in light of that, can you agree that in fact, it should be reasonable for us to look at a number of items, including, and one that I want your answer on, and we know we have limited time. Mr. Weiss supposedly had this ability to bring a prosecution anywhere. He now explicitly has that ability. However, are you concerned and should we have the right to look into the fact that political appointees in California and in the District of Columbia refused to, in fact, cooperate with him in those invest in investigation that he was charged with doing in Delaware, but which flowed over into their jurisdictions? Isn't that, in fact, an example where those political appointees of the now president, that their decision not to cooperate with him creates at least an, a, an appearance of political interference with the investigation of the president's son and possibly activities related to the president? Look, uh, I'm happy to answer this question in hypothetical, but not in the specifics, because I have stayed out of this matter. Um, in the hypothetical, 
Um, um, it is the proce normal process of the department that if a U.S. attorney in one district wants to bring a case in another, they go to that other district and consult. It's perfectly appropriate. They do that in order to determine what the policies are in that district, what the practices have been in that district, what the judges are like in that district. A, 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 a U.S. attorney in another district does not have the authority to deny um, um, a, another U.S. attorney the th ability uh, to go forward, and I have assured Mr. Weiss that he would have the authority one way or the other, and I think Mr. Weiss's letters completely reflect that. Thank you. To be continued. Time the gentleman's expired.